We're ready to start the second half. And Emory will have the basketball to start the second half. On the floor for Case, it's Reed Anderson, Brian Erse, Tom Summers, Eric Doerr, and Alex Hildebrandt, the original starting five. On the floor for Emory, it's Claunch, it's Hickson, it's Curtin, it's Spragans, and it's Williams, the original starting five. Williams, three from the left side, right away they put it up, misses it, and Reed Anderson comes down with a rebound. Case will move from right to left on your radio dial the second half. Dressed in their home whites, trimmed in blue and silver. Reed Anderson off a high screen, dribbles in left side, shot off the glass, missed it. And the foul will go against Case. Going to call a player control foul on Reed Anderson. That will be his third. Anderson with three fouls and nine points. The 6'6 junior out of Avon Lake. St. Edward High School. Claunch with the ball for Emory. Case will come out in a man defense. Hickson has the top of the key now with Reed Anderson on him. Right side to Spragans. Hickson, they swing it to Julianne Williams. Williams on the left wing. 15 seconds to shoot. Strong move inside, right of the lane. Put up a shot, missed it. But he drew the foul. Fouls on Tom Summers. That will be Tom's first. One foul on Summers, he's got 12 points, and at the line shooting two for Emory will be Julianne Williams. Williams on the season, a 65% free throw shooter. First one's up and it's good. He is two of three from the foul line this afternoon. He's got 10 points. 6'2 junior guard out of Georgetown Prep in Maryland. Second free throw is also up and good. He's got 11. And it's 43-37, Case is up six with 19 minutes to play. Just underway here in the second half. Alex Hildebrandt gets double teamed on the near sideline and reaching in and drawing a foul is Austin Claunch. That will be Claunch's second foul. Hildebrandt will inbound it right in front of us at the scorer's table, gets it off to Brian Erse. Erse playing in his final home game as a senior. It was senior day for the men on Friday night. It'll be senior day for the women this afternoon as they'll honor two seniors for the women. They'll honor Kristen Atkins and they'll honor Ashley Tondo. Case threw the basketball away, a turnover for the Spartans, and here comes Emery. Claunch with it. Swing it right side to Daniel Curtin. Curtin off a screen, dribbles in, left side, throws up a wild shot off the glass, rolled in, almost went in completely in, rolled around, fell in, and popped back out. So. No basket for Emery in case he's got the basketball. Lob pass inside to Doerr. Doerr, double, double team sandwich. Doerr put up a shot, missed it, got his own rebound. And the foul, he was fouled. That double team and a half there, too, as a curtain rolled down. I was on Julian Williams. It's his third. To triple team him. Doerr did a nice job fighting up the first time, then even a better job, Ron, grabbing his own rebound for the second shot. So Eric Doerr's at the foul line. He'll shoot two. First one's up. It's short. Eric Doerr, 0 of 1 from the stripe in the first half and 0 of 1 in the second half. Doerr on the season, a 53% free throw shooter. He makes the second. So he's on the board with one point. Eric on the season, averaging 11 points, 6 rebounds. Case is up 7. It's 44-37. Lots of time left in this basketball. Curtin gets a high screen. Kicks the ball to Hicks in right wing. Back to Curtin, top of the key, working against Hildebrandt. Nice spin move, goes in off the glass, missed the shot. But with position is Hickson underneath. He missed the follow. Long rebound, com rebound comes out to Reed Anderson. Eric Dewar with a nice deep tip. Anderson chased it down. Brian Erse, ball picked. Ball's loose. Dewar comes up with it. Dewar in the left corner. Hands it back off to Erse. Now to the left block. Erse working down there against Spragans. Soft right hand hook, missed it. And Spragans comes down with the rebound. Off to Claunch. Here comes Emery quickly down the floor. Claunch all the way off the glass, missed it. And a whistle underneath. Over the back. Falls on Tom Summers. Second foul on Summers. Third team foul on Case. Emery will get the basketball back. Spartans up seven at 44 37. 
Clutch will inbound it to Fernandez. They're going to swing it left side to Friedberg. Clutch with it, top of the key. Grevin, left wing, in the corner to Fernandez. Steps up, draws the defense off to Friedberg. Friedberg pulls back from eight feet, air ball. Fernandez with the rebound underneath, though, and he put it back up and in. Anthony Fernandez was in the right place at the right time that time for Emery. Lead is back to five for Case, and they throw the ball away. Errant pass by Brian Erst, trying to get it to Alex Hildebrandt. Hickson on the break, lays it up and in. Chad Hickson's got nine. Case is up three, and this is where Emery's been a couple of times. Late in the first half, they went from down 11 to down three. Case brought it back out, took an eight-point lead at halftime. Whistle and a foul at midcourt. Stepping in and drawing the foul is Michael Friedberg. That will be his second, team third on the Eagles. Case will have the ball, side out, far sideline, right at half court. Some banners are hanging here in the gym for the four seniors that are being honored this weekend. Two on the men's side, Antoine Coward and Brian Erse. Erse in the left corner, ball kicked out of his hands or slapped out of his hands by Fernandez. Case will keep it. And then the other two banners in honor of the two seniors on the women's basketball team, that's Kristen Atkins and Ashley Tondo. They will be honored in their game at 1 o'clock, and that will follow this one. Timeout for Case as they tried to work the ball. Coach McDonald wants a timeout. We'll take one, two. Spartans are up three. It's 44-41, 16-31 left to play in this basketball game. We'll be back on the Case Broadcasting Network. Coming out of their huddles after that timeout. Spartans up three. It's 44-41, 16-31 left to play in this basketball game. Case will have the ball out. Colin Mulholland in, in front of his team bench inbounds it to Summers and gives it back to Mulholland. They swing it right side to Erse. Erse ball fake, dribbles in, shot off the glass, missed it. Long tip out to Austin Claunch. Here comes Emery. Claunch down the floor. Claunch with some nice dribbling. Kicks it off to Dan Curtin. He put up a shot, reverse layup, didn't go. Summers saves it. Summers saves it to Friedberg. Out to Hickson now with a three in the air for Emery. Misses it, and Reed Anderson grabs the rebound. Emery with a chance to tie the game on that possession. Case, the other side. Eric Doerr, soft shot from the left block. He makes it. Doerr's got three. Here comes Emery. Top of the key, Fernandez. Swings it left to Grevin. Hickson, now a cutter inside. Works against Reed Anderson. Puts it off the glass and good. Chad Hickson has 11. Case is up three, it's 46-43, 15-35 left to play in this basketball game. Reed Anderson with it, left wing. Now to the foul line to Summers. Nice lob inside to Eric Doerr, he lays it up and in. Eric Doerr has five and Case is up five at 48-43. Claunch off to Fernandez. Fernandez steps up, 18-footer, it's good. Anthony Fernandez has four. First basket of the second half. Case is up three at 48-45. Just over 15 minutes left to play in this game. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back on the Spartans Broadcasting Network.
put you down in three, two. Case is 12 and nine, four and six in conference play. They've won three games in a row in University Athletic Association play. Emory comes to town with a 14 and seven record. They are six and four, including a win on Friday night in Pittsburgh against Carnegie Mellon. Case will have the basketball up three with 15 minutes left to play. Brian Urs will do the honors. He's trapped at half court. Gets it off to Reed Anderson, who's trapped at half court as well. Emory running that double, double team trap at half court. Anderson dribbled in, threw up a layup. Was, looked like a foul. No foul was called. Reed, uh, ball went out of bounds off Emory, so Case will keep it. 22 seconds on the shot clock for the Spartans. Ball did not draw iron, so Case will have 22 seconds to shoot. Colin Mulholland will inbound it for the Spartans. Lob pass into Reed Anderson, comes down with it, goes back up off the glass, and he was fouled from behind. Foul's gonna go against Michael Friedberg. That will be his third. Friedberg with three points, or four points, three fouls. At the line shooting two is Reed Anderson. Anderson with nine first half points, looking for his first points of the second half. First free throws up and it's good. So Reed Anderson, one of two from the line so far this afternoon. He's got 10 points. Second free throw is up. This one's long. Eric Doerr fighting for the rebound underneath. Claunch comes up with a loose ball. Here comes Emery. Spartans up two baskets. It's 49-45. Hickson with it along the right wing with Colin Mulholland on him. Case in a 2-3 zone. It's Urs and Mulholland out top. And along the baseline, it's Doerr in the middle with Summers and Reed Anderson on the wings. Hickson with it right wing. Now to Claunch who steps up top of the key. Goes left side to Grevin. Back to Claunch. At the foul line, it's Friedberg. Looked like he traveled with it. Dribbles in, puts up a shot off the glass and made it. Sure did look like he took some steps there, Ron. Michael Friedberg has six. Two point game, closest it's been, Ed, since when? Beginning of the game at some point? Yeah, you gotta go back all the way to 4-2 uh, last time Emory was within two. Reed Anderson with a pass from Erse, throws up a three, misses it, and Claunch comes down with a rebound for Emory. Austin Claunch on the break, over to Hickson, right wing. Blows by Summers, kicks it back out to Fernandez. Now a cutter, Friedberg in the lane, out to Grevin, three in the air, it's good. Alex Grevin with his first basket of the afternoon, he's got three, and Emory has taken the lead. They've uh, crawled all the way back from an 11 point deficit a couple of times in the first half, they're up a point. Yeah, the only lead they had was 2 nothing. one minute into the basketball game. Case with a turnover, Emory coming the other way with it. Eagles are now up a point. They'll work that ball on the perimeter. Claunch and Hickson with it. Claunch, Hickson, and Grevin. Grevin just made a three. Summers comes out to pick him up. Grevin dribbles in, puts up a shot, missed it. Rebound down by Doerr. Doerr off to Erse. Erse on the break for Case. Erse dribbles in, nobody picks him up, puts up a soft shot. It was an air ball, goes out of bounds. Nobody touched it. And Emory will get it back. Rob Scott's going to check in for Case. Scott will check in for Reed Anderson. Eric Doerr will take a seat. And also back in the game for Case is Sudis. So it's Mulholland and Urs out front on the 2-3 zone. Summers in the middle. Sudis on a right wing and Rob Scott on the left wing. Claunch with it. It'll go right side to Hickson. Back to Claunch. Swings it left to Gulata. Well, here in the second half, Case has just seven shots from the field. Emory has 17. Claunch dribbles in, draws the defense. Beautiful play. Julian Williams just missed the bunny. Stole the basketball on the rebound, though, and he's going to draw a foul. No, they're going to say jump ball. Williams is upset with himself because he missed a bunny. Case will have it on the possession arrow. Case now just two of seven from the floor in the second half, Ron. Spartans led by 11 three times in the opening half. Emory, though, never went away. Closed it to three before the half. Case went back out up eight at halftime. Emory closed it to two. Then now, eventually, they've taken the one-point lead. Evan Sudis with some strong work left baseline. And Sudis gets his first basket of the afternoon. He's got two. Case is up a point, 51-50. 12-20, left to play. Swinging it outside, they got four guys around the perimeter, Emory does right now. Actually five, because Fernandez has now joined them on the left baseline. 
Claunch with it, left wing to Hickson. Far three in the air, it's short, and the rebound comes out to Tom Summers. Well, they really spread that floor. They had literally five guys along the three-point line from right baseline to left baseline. Colin Mulholland with it, top of the key to Summers. Summers ball above his head, right side to Urs. Urs looking inside to Sudis, kicks it out to Scott, top of the key. Rob Scott with pressure, hands it off to Brian Urs. Urs dribbling into a double team. Now he's trapped in the right corner, dribbles around it, comes in off the glass and good. Brian Urs with some strong moves on that right baseline. He was trapped a couple of times, dribbled his way out of it. He dribbles up and he lays it up in and in. He's got 13 points. There's a timeout on the floor. We'll take one, two. Case up three at 53-50. 11.36 left to play. We'll be back on the Case Broadcasting Network. Case staring at 11 minutes, 36 seconds left to play in this basketball game. The Spartans are up three at 53-50, trying to extend that conference win streak to four games. Emory, a formidable opponent today, 14-7 on the season, 6-4 in conference play. They're right there in the thick of things, as is Case. There's a team at the top, Washington University, who's kind of running away with it with only one loss, but then there's a logjam of folks from Brandeis is 6-4, and four, NYU 6-4, and four, Emory 6-4, and four, Chicago 5-5, five and, five, and Case and Rochester both 4-6, and six, so two games separate, six teams. Emory's got the basketball. Grevin with it, dribbles left side, reverse right-handed layup, it's up and it's good. Grevin's got five second-half points. Case is up one, it's 53-52. Left wing Mulholland. With Gulata on him. Swing it right side to Rob Scott. Rob Scott tried to feed it inside to Tom Summers and stepping up and knocking it out of bounds was Julianne Williams. 17 to 10. Emory outscoring case here in the second half. Rob Scott will inbound it. Gets it to Tom Summers, far right wing with Williams on him. Now on the right block, it's Erse, Erse gets it stolen, Erse gets it back, then stolen again, ball's loose on the ground. Bodies all over the place, still all over the place. Ball still loose in the backcourt, Fernandez controls, and here comes Emery. Fernandez off to Gulata. Gulata looking inside to Williams, he's gonna dribble back out, and they'll reset it. Claunch calls for it left wing, gets it. 10.30 left to play, Case is up a point. Emery's gonna pull it out, and they're gonna once again put all their guys on the perimeter. Now Claunch will pass and cut. Williams has it between the circles. Right side to Claunch in front of that Emory bench. Emory moving from left to right on your radio dial. Four seconds to shoot. Williams with it, right corner. Gonna pull up, Tom Summers will let him shoot. He misses it, and Rob Scott comes down with a rebound. Obviously the defensive plan there for Case was if Williams wants to shoot it from the corner, we'll let him. Williams just stepped up and stole the basketball. Mulholland tried to get it into Sudis, and Julianne Williams stole the basketball. So here comes Emery with a chance to once again take the lead. Spartans up a point, it's 53-52. Gulata dribbles in from 16 feet, missed it. And Summers tips it to Brian Erse. And more like he punched it out there, Ron. I think he did it on purpose too. He went up, he saw Brian standing there and he just punched it or slapped it over to him for the rebound. Mulholland to Erse, Erse left wing. Dribbles in, right side, goes up for a shot and he was fouled, fouled by Grevin. Foul's going to be on Alex Grevin. That will be his first foul, fifth team foul of the second half for Emory. At the line shooting two will be Brian Erse. 
Earth's on the season, 78% free throw shooter. Case is a team shooting 68%. Brian Earth's first shot's up and it's long, rattles around and falls out. Brian Earth with 13 points. He had 11 in the opening half. The senior out of Berwyn, Illinois from Morton West High School. We had a nice visit with his mom after the game on Friday night. She came over and thanked us for the broadcasts. Loves and listening back in Illinois to the games on the internet and watches them on the internet through the digital media department here at Case. Erst missed them both, didn't he? Yeah, and the rebound, long rebound on the second one that uh, Dewar tried to control and just simply couldn't corral it, knocked it out of bounds, and Emery will take over on the side out. Tight game, one point game, Case up a point, 9.22 left to play. Clonch with it for Emery. Screens, they free up Fernandez. He'll shoot an 18-footer, missed it short. And Evan Sudis with a nice block out, grabs the rebound. Rob Scott hands it off to Reed Anderson between the circles, right side to Hildebrandt, and they'll bring it back left. Reed Anderson with a step, left baseline, pulls up, looking inside, Doerr's got it left block. Eric Doerr along that left block, whistle underneath. Foul's gonna go against Emery. The foul will be on Anthony Fernandez. That will be his second. And they could have got Claunch for reaching in as well as Claunch dropped down off of Anderson. The double team Dewar reached in and got a piece of arm. So Case will inbound it with 35 seconds to shoot. Up a point with nine minutes left. Inbound to Evan Suit as far right corner. Three in the air, misses it badly. And the wild rebound comes down to Hickson. When I say wild, it was just a loose ball that was kind of bouncing around. Claunch with it, top of the key. Claunch dribbles back. Emory with a chance to retake the lead. They have led twice in this game. Two to nothing early on, and then a one-point lead just moments ago. 50 to 49, the only two leads that Emory's had today. Case is led by as many as 11, Ron, three times in the first half. Long three from Gulata, who made three in the opening half. He missed it, but as Evan Sudis was trying to grab the rebound, he knocked it out of bounds, and Emory's gonna get the ball back. Case will have to play defense for a full 35 again, Ron. Claunch will inbound it to Gulata out between the circles. They swing it right side to Hickson. They go back to Claunch. Alex Hildebrandt on him. Claunch with a three from the left wing. Missed it, but Hickson came down with a rebound and got the follow. Chad Hickson's got 13 points, seven in the first, six in the second. And Emery has taken the lead. It's 54-53. Rob Scott goes to Reed Anderson, left wing, and they're going to call a blocking foul on Emery. Fouls on Hickson. That's 17 fouls on Emery. Ron, that'll be Case shooting a one and one for the final eight minutes of this ball game. Case so far from the charity stripe this afternoon, shooting just 47%. 8 of 17, so maybe that'll work in Emery's favor. Reed Anderson's at the line. Anderson on the season, 78% free throw shooter. First shot's up, and it's good. Reed is 2 of 4 from the foul line this afternoon. He's got 11 points, averaging 16 on the season. Second free throw by Reed. This one's up, and it's also good. Had that cold air has uh, come <laughs> back to us. It, it blew air conditioning on us here in the scores table, I think. We get so wrapped up in calling the game, we get all worked up, they want to keep us cool. I remember that from Friday night for the heavy fleece today. Emery with the basketball, Claunch with it, works it right side to Curtin. Now it's Friedberg, left of the lane. Back to Claunch, they really move the basketball. Dan Curtin will shoot it right wing, he misses it. And Alex Hildebrandt comes up with the rebound. Case was in another zone, Ron, but it didn't look like their traditional 2-3 zone. Spartans up a point, 55-54. Very entertaining basketball game here at Horsburg Gymnasium. 7.20 left to play. Door with it at the foul line off to Sudis, and they go immediately over to Brian Erse. Top of the key to Hildebrandt, kicks it to Reed Anderson. Ball fake right, dribbles left, reverse layup, up and good. We saw that Friday night how Anderson had some Aggressive attacks at the basketball hoop continuing today. Dan Curtin, three in the air. Boy, right corner. Curtin was open, spotted up, shot it. 
and he tied the game at 57. Six minutes, 58 seconds left to play. Timeout on the floor. We'll take one, two. Stay tuned. The final seven minutes ought to be real good. We'll be back on the Case Broadcasting Network. Six minutes, 58 seconds left to play. Case and Emery deadlocked at 57. The Eagles have made eight three-pointers, eight of 27. They have taken 27 shots from three-point range, 63 shots overall in this basketball game. Case on the flip side, Ed? Just 36 shots, but the teams in terms of making the baskets pretty close. 23 for Emery, 22 for Case. Case with the basketball. Brian Erso out near half court with it. Splits a double team. Erso dribbles in, draws the defense, kicks it off to Reed Anderson. Left baseline. Ball fake, pulls up, soft shot, missed it. And the rebound comes out to Hickson. Here comes Emery quickly down the floor. Hickson draws it over to Julianne Williams, lays it up right side with pressure, missed it. Sudas down with the rebound. Off to Reed Anderson. Case on the break. Reed spins at the foul line, reaching in, and Austin Claunch is going to get a foul. Claunch, he'll have three fouls. And at the line, shooting the one and one for Case will be Reed Anderson. Uh, Claunch has got some quick hands and all day has been kind of reaching at the players as he's been out guarding one on one or in the fast break situation. So he's kind of whistled for a couple of those fouls today. Reed Anderson at the line, he is three of five on the afternoon. He has 12 points. First free throw is up, and it's good. Case will be in this situation for the rest of the game. And two more fouls by Emory. They'll be in the double bonus. They'll get two free throws. Tom Summers checks in off the bench. Eric Doerr will check out. Summers back in the game with 12 first half points. Eric Doerr will sit down with five. Well, knowing that's a situation, I'd expect Case to be very aggressive, Ron, and go to the basket, try to find those lanes or go baseline and see if they can draw the fouls. 59-57, Case is up two as Reed Anderson makes both free throws. Emery with the basketball. Left side, Daniel Curtin and Claunch will play catch along that left wing. Curtin's got it with Urs on him. Friedberg now at the foul line. Kicks it off, Hickson, three in the air, right wing, rattles around and drops. Emery just makes their threes. Hickson's got 16. And Case is down a point at 60 to 59. Inside to Alex Hildebrand off the glass and good. Left block. Alex made the shot. Drew a foul, so he'll go to the line. He'll shoot for a three-point play. Alex has five. He'll look for six at the free throw line. Next free throw is up. He misses it. And the rebound comes out. Oh, Tom Summers goes up and over the case bench. That looked dangerous. Where were his teammates at, Ron? <laughs> they need to stand up and catch him. So Hildebrandt missed the free throw. Case is up one at 61-60 with 5.30 left to play. Austin Claunch with the screen from Williams. 
Gets it over to Julian Williams, who works it inside to Friedberg, working against Summers, and he just backed him in, and he made an easy shot. Michael Friedberg's got eight. Emery back up a point at 62-61. Brian Urs will do the honors for Case. It's Urs, it's Summers, it's Reed Anderson. He's got it left wing. Sudis and Alex Hildebrand on the floor right now for Case. Urs works inside, triple teamed inside, forces a shot up off the glass, rolls around, don't, doesn't go. Sudis couldn't grab the rebound, and Emery comes up with it. Austin Claunch quickly down the floor to Julianne Williams. Spots up, top of the key, missed a three. Summers comes down with a carry. 66 shots have flown from the hands of the Emory Eagles so far this afternoon. 67 with the update. Reed Anderson with it left wing. Top of the key to Urs. Case down a point. 4.22 left to play. Alex Hildebrand inside, lost the ball. Ball's tied up underneath, and they're going to call a timeout. Emory called a timeout as soon as they got it before they got tied up. That's a quick one. We'll take one, too. Spartans down a point. 4.23 left to play. We'll be back on the Case Broadcasting Network. Emory will have the basketball. Case will set up on defense. Just to reset this game for you, in the first half, Case was in control a few times, up 11 on three different occasions. Never in total control, though, because Emory always battled back. They drew within three at one point. Case worked it back out to an eight-point lead at halftime. And then underneath, Tom Summers just picked up a foul inside. Fouls on Summers inside, away from the ball. That's his third. Then in the second half, Emory closed it within two and then eventually took the lead. And it's been a switch of one-point leads from here on, from that point on. At 50-49 after a three-pointer from Emory as it's been back and forth. It was tied at 57. Dan Curtin steps up, throws up a three left wing, misses it. Reed Anderson fights Hickson for that rebound, and Anderson comes down with it. Hickson over to Erse. Erse right side now to Hildebrandt. Top of the key, it's Tom Summers. Case with a chance to take the lead again. Spartans are down one. Reed Anderson fakes right, dribbles left, puts up a shot, missed it. Sudis comes down with a big rebound. They clear it back out. Anderson now with it left wing. Left block to Tom Summers. Summers working against Fernandez. Turnaround shot, missed it, and Fernandez grabs the rebound. Case scoreless in their last couple of possessions. Emory with a chance to extend their lead. Friedberg with it to Fernandez right wing. Fernandez in front of that Emory bench. Emory working left to right on your radio dial. Curtin draws the defense. Try to get it back out. Reed Anderson stole the basketball. That's just the second turnover for Emory this afternoon, Ron. Nice play by Reed Anderson. Two turnovers, only two for Emory. That's amazing. Alex Hildebrandt will control, gets it over to Anderson in front of that case bench, left wing. Top of the key now to Sudis. Swings it right to Erse. Cutter in the lane is Anderson. Erse still has it. Now he lobs it into Anderson, working against Claunch. This is a mismatch height-wise. Anderson dribbles in, fadeaway shot. It's going to be short. It's an air ball. And a uh, whistle and a foul in the backcourt. Tom Summers is going to pick up his fourth foul. Summers just being too aggressive. That is four fouls on Tom Summers. Four fouls on Summers with 2.48 left to play. Case is down a point. Spartans have shot well, 56% from the field. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Try to pick it up here in the last few minutes. You can okay. hear Coach McDonald uh, working his team, saying, let's go, fellas. Two minutes, 34 seconds of basketball left to play. But the shot discrepancy is huge. It's 27. Going to be a foul on the floor here. Foul's going to go against Brian Erse, I think. 
Fouls on the floor. It was the sixth team foul for Case, or does that put them over the limit? Does that give them seven? Put them at six. Put them at six. So the foul's on Erse. That is his first. So Emery will keep it. Work it into Hickson. Swing it back out to Friedberg. And they bring it way out to Grevin between the circles. Emery with the basketball. Two minutes and 20 seconds left to play. Eagles up a point over the Spartans. Fernandez, top of the key, right side to Claunch. Plenty of time, they had 35 seconds on the shot clock on the inbound, so they were only down to 16 now. Claunch gets a screen, Claunch steps up, shoots a three, misses it long, and the rebound goes into the corner, and it goes into the corner, and Friedberg grabbed it, and they're gonna call Sudas for a foul. Apparently. Evan Sudas will be called for a push in the back as him and Friedberg went for the ball in the far corner here at Horsberg Gymnasium. So for Sudas, that will be his first, and that will send Friedberg to the line where he'll shoot the one and one. And Case has just one field goal in the last five minutes run, and it was Alex Hildebrandt, and then they had two free throws from Reed Anderson, but since the seven-minute mark... Free throw is up and missed by Friedberg, which is good news for Case. But on the flip side, Emery only has two in that time. This game has stayed tight. Pretty much this entire second half. Spartans are down a point. Minute 45 left to play. 15 seconds to shoot. Erse with it left wing. Erse cross court pass to Hildebrandt. They work it inside along that right baseline. Tom Summers shot it. Shot was blocked by Friedberg out of bounds. Case will have it out under their own basket with seven seconds to shoot. And Colin Mulholland has entered the game. And if you remember on Friday night in a tight game, Mulholland came in and knocked down two huge threes. Yeah, it was 69-66, and Mulholland hit a three to put Case up six with just over four minutes to go. And it really created a lead that uh, Rochester couldn't overcome. Timeout on the floor. We'll take one, two. Minute 34 left. Stay tuned. Case is down a point, 62-61. We'll be back on the Case Broadcasting Network. Both teams have come out of their respective huddles. Case will have the basketball out underneath their own basket. Seven seconds to shoot for the Spartans. Case down a point. 94 seconds left in this basketball game. Urs will do the honors. Urs in the corner to Colin Mulholland. Back to Summers, turnaround shot on the baseline. Summers missed it. Ball went out of bounds off Emery. Fernandez and Doer were fighting for the rebound. It went off Fernandez out of bounds, and Case will get it back. Ed with 35 seconds left on the shot clock, a full mm. 35. And Doer got a possession, came around, actually got a hand on it, and as he flipped it away, it went off of Fernandez. Inbounds pass, a wild loose one. Ball's fought for on the sideline. Off of Austin Claunch's leg out of bounds, so Case will keep it. Well, there was an errant pass on that inbounds play. There was a, apparently a play on to a space that no one came to. So Case will have the basketball. Minute 27 left to play. 33 seconds on the shot clock. Spartans down a point. Reed Anderson will have it out. They'll switch the shot clock to 34 seconds. And Anderson will have it out right in front of the Case bench. Duran Summers will set a high pick. Summers will come off of it. Reed Anderson looking for someone. Gets it into Brian Erse. Erse with it with Claunch on him. 
Erst dribbles between the circles. Brian Erst and Case with an all-important possession here as the clock continues to wind down. Minute 12 left to play. Erst double teamed out front. He's in trouble. Erst dribbles out of it. Dribbles into the lane. Puts up a wild shot. Drew a foul, and it won't go. Sean McDonald jumped through his shoes. He thought of that one drops. It's not only a two-pointer, but a chance at a three-point play. Rolled around and wouldn't go. Brian Erst got, I think, knee in the hip, the left hip on the foul. The foul was against Fernandez. Anthony Fernandez, his third, the senior out of Miami, Florida. So Brian Erst is at the line. He'll shoot two. Erst, one of three from the foul line this afternoon. Brian Erst's first free throw is up and it's good. He had missed two in a row, so that's good to see. He's got 14 points. And on senior weekend, Brian Erst, one of the two seniors on this case team, has just tied this game at 62. Erst eyes the second one, it's up and it's also good. So Case is up a point. Minute nine and counting left to play. Austin Claunch will bring it up for Emery. Claunch is gonna dribble left. Get a screen from Friedberg, double screen. Claunch dribbles around it, gets it off to Grevin, three in the air, misses it long. Sudis fights for the rebound, didn't get it. Oh, Hickson got it. Somebody went up and over the back of I think it's gonna be Sudis. And Sudis is gonna draw a foul, and that's gonna send Hickson to the line. Case had a chance there. Emery missed the ball, and Evan Sudis went up for the rebound, and just it just didn't just didn't fall for them. So at the line, shooting for Emery is Chad Hickson. Hickson eyes the first, shoots the first, and it's short. Missed it. Well, you could tell coming out of that knee bend, he just wasn't confident. He wasn't in rhythm out of that right. knee bend. Yeah, he was kind of like off, off rhythm. Evan Sudis will check out. Case is up a point with 54 seconds left. And at the line, shooting one more free throw is Chad Hickson. Hickson is 0 of 3 from the foul line this afternoon. Eyes the second, deep knee bend, comes out of it, puts it up, and rolls around and drops. So Hickson makes this one, and he has tied the game at 63. 54 seconds left, 34 on the shot clock, so it's a 20 second differential. Brian Erst will bring it up for Case. Game tied at 63. Erst working against Claunch. Brian Erst dribbles in, shot off the glass, won't go, tip. Brian Erst comes up with it. Brian Erst comes up with a loose ball. 38 seconds left in the game. 31 seconds on the shot clock. Seven second differential. Erst dribbling. Erst into a double team off to Reed Anderson. Back to Brian Erst. Game tied at 63. Erst with Hickson all over him near the scorer's table. Coach Sean McDonald wants a timeout. We'll take one too. This game has gotten exciting. 22.6 seconds left. Game tied at 63. We'll be back after this break on the Case Broadcasting Network. Well, here we go. Both teams with uh, an awful lot of spirit going on right now, including all the folks in this gym. 22.6 seconds left. Game's tied at 63. It has been everything you could ask for in a college basketball game. Spartans will inbound it right in front of our scores table. Reed, Inder Reed Anderson gets it into Tom Summers. Summers with Friedberg on him. Summers over to Urs right side. 12 seconds to shoot, 17 on the game clock. Colin Mulholland left wing. Off to Reed Anderson, off the screen. Anderson with tight defense. Anderson dribbles in off the glass and good. Reed Anderson just made it. Case is up two. Nine seconds left. Timeout by the Emory coach. 
Jason Zimmerman's running down the floor, screaming and yelling. Nine seconds left on the game clock. I'm not sure what he's talking about, but he was ready to I thought the ball right was, out of this gym. I thought the ball was inbound. It went through the hoop with about 10 and a half. So he said, he said time should have, when the ball was made, the, the clock should have stopped until the inbounds happened. And that is correct. So they're going to put a second back on the clock. So but it goes from 9.2 to 10.5. So Emery's got the ball after the Reed Anderson layup. It was a beautiful drive by Reed Anderson as the shot clock was really winding down because there was only a seven second differential. So there was really three seconds left on the shot clock when Reed Anderson made that layup. So they put a second back on the shot clock. It's at 10.5. And that's accurate because that's when Anderson made the shot. And I think the clock started because there was a fake inbound pass. And at that point, then they called timeout. But the clock started as soon as he released it inbounds. So Emery's in a timeout as well as Case. We're going to keep it right here. We've got just over 10 seconds left. Coach Sean McDonald's got his team huddled up. He is not only talking to them about playing defense, but also what happens if Emory scores quickly. And if you're Case, you've got to be wondering. Emory's made nine threes. They've shot 32 threes. <laughs> They've taken 70, 70 shots. shots. That is amazing. We'll have to ask somebody at the scores table if that's some kind of record. They have taken 70 shots in this basketball game. They're going to take one more. Well, that's 70 shots, and they've been out-rebounded. So it's not as if those shots are coming on putbacks where they're missing a shot and getting a second one real quick in a possession. Case. So here we go. Case on the floor. 10.5 seconds left. Case in a soft full-court press. Sudas will be down with two players in the backcourt. It's Claunch and Fernandez. They get it into Fernandez. Fernandez dribbling the ball, still in the backcourt off to Claunch. Six seconds. Claunch dribbling up against Urs, kicks it in the corner. Gulata dribbles in, puts up a shot, partially blocked, game's over. The game clock hit zero as the ball went out of bounds and the game is over. The officials are heading out of the gym. The head coach for Emory, Jason Zimmerman, is asking for another second on the clock. The officials, two of them are out of the gym, one still talking to Zimmerman. Zimmerman's still down with his assistant coach talking and the game is over. The officials have left the gym and Case just knocked off Emory. 65-63 and a frantic finish that ended underneath the Emory basket with the ball being knocked out of bounds. 